You took an interest early in your career on childhood trauma. Why was that? So um, my interest really was in understanding chronic illness and um, tr trying to get to the root of chronic illness led me, unfortunately, to childhood trauma. So you found that your patients with early onset severe chronic diseases, what they all had childhood trauma. Right. I mean, I was shocked. Over eight years, I did over 500 interviews. And what I found was is that people who would tell me that their childhood was mostly okay, um, maybe had one, maybe two relatively well-controlled illnesses. But people who told me that their childhood was difficult, 100% had severe illness, including um, not just hypertension, asthma, diabetes, but cancer, autoimmune diseases, mm -hmm. lupus, Crohn's. So when you're, when you're looking at childhood trauma, what kind of falls into that bucket? The classic things which have been studied are uh, neglect, which um, early childhood neglect at, uh, from birth till age three um, has a devastating effect because the brain can't really develop. Mm. But beyond that, the kind of traumas are uh, physical abuse, sexual abuse, um, verbal, emotional abuse, violence in the home. Now that kind of trauma can happen to anybody anywhere, anybody. But, it, but, it's, but it's not necessarily equally distributed. There's no question that um, what's called the social determinants of health, um, poverty, racism, discrimination of any type, mm -hmm. um, has a much bigger impact. If you don't feel safe and you don't feel loved, then your brain can't calm down. Mm. And so you can't sleep. And the sleep is one of the body's most important mechanisms to continually generate health or healing. Now you discovered in your practice that those folks with these really severe chronic diseases that had those childhood traumas mostly weren't sleeping well. Right. What, what was keeping them awake? Some people had a very hard time falling asleep, were afraid to sleep in the dark, um, would sleep with, try to go to sleep with the TV on. And of course, then you don't get deep sleep. Other people would fall asleep, but then wake up every hour or two, oftentimes with what we call intrusive memories, mm. which are memories of things that happen in the past that just pop into your mind and are uh, startling. And did you find there were things you could do or others could do that would, would help that? So part of what I, once I realized that um, there was this tremendous amount of trauma underlying these illnesses. I felt we're not going to get anywhere by just harping at people that they're not taking their pills or they're not um, following their diet or whatever. Now, wait, what, wait, do doctors harp on patients? Yes. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, we do. <laughs> yes, yeah. unfortunately. Yeah. And, and really, that's one of, I mean, I, for a long time, was part of the uh, quality improvement revolution mm. and trying to say, you know, we should track these markers and all this stuff. And that's part of why I tried to look for something different, because I didn't think that approach was making a difference. So you spent part of your medical career trying to treat the numbers. Right. And, and you spent most of your medical career trying to treat the patient, trying to, to treat kind of who they were and the traumatic experiences they'd gone through, which one of those worked better? Absolutely, getting to know the patient, letting the patient come to their own appreciation of their history and their health worked 100% better. We clearly have um, a lot of patients uh, and I hope a lot of providers that can be blessed by that knowledge and by that approach to healthcare. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for having me.